next part is the is is one of the more challenging parts it takes the most strength that's going to be limbing so let's go from the bucking to the limbing part of it limbing is probably one of the more dangerous uh parts of the job well, of course felling as you said yeah felling is going to be the most dangerous uh but uh limbing can be even more dangerous because you become complacent you're thinking oh i'm just limbing i'm not doing a big thing like falling a 60 inch dug fur uh, and that's where it'll bite you the most dangerous portion of a chainsaw is the tip that's rotating it's got a lot of power it's going fast you need to always always know where that tip is and what's going on if i were to run this saw at full blast and i would put this poke that tip right there what would happen it would probably just completely mess you up it would walk back on me it would come back like this so you've got to know where that tip is. That danger portion is from here, from mm -hmm. the nine o'clock position to the 12. If that hits a limb, if that hits a, a, a piece of wood, if it hits another tree, it is going to walk back on you. That's why it's so important to have that hand position here because if you run into that, if you make a mistake and you lose control of that tip, it's gonna come back, it's gonna engage that break. But that kickback is very serious and very dangerous and something you want to be aware of. As we go through here, we're going to be limbing. You're going to need to know exactly where that tip is. You'll go in, you'll cut, you'll let the chain spool down to stop running, engage the brake, reposition, disengage the brake, make another cut, and go on. But always, always, always make sure that that tip is not touching anything and you're not cutting with that tip. You're cutting with the, anywhere from here, from nine o'clock to the backside is okay, but don't cut with this. I will teach you how to do that later, how to plunge cut, how to overcome that, but that's an advanced technique. It's not what we're going to do today. So I'm going to demonstrate a, a simple limbing as we limb up this, and then we'll start the saws and we'll limb together. You know what you're making me want to do? What's that? Cut two eye holes right here and wear it like this. <laughs> well, I, I don't think you should be naive. You should know the dangers. But the, if you do it properly, if you listen to me and you follow these rules, uh, it won't happen. So as Jack and I were just sitting here talking, he mentioned how exhausting this is. You, can't, you couldn't imagine doing this all day. You'll condition your body to do it, but you need to learn tricks uh, to make it the work easier. And one of those things is the keeping that saw close to your body. We all know how hard it is to hold a weight straight out like this. You can't hold it out there very long. So I've gotten really good running these big saws about using my body, balancing it off my knee. I'm always keeping it close. I'm always positioning my body where I can keep it in close. I can use a knee. I can do all sorts of cutting. You need to think about that when you're working. Try to avoid anything like this. It's hard on your back and it will wear you out. Did I do pretty good with that when I was cutting these? Yeah, it's a little bit different with bucking because you're not supporting the saw. The log is supporting the saw and you're basically there just tending it. Now, when you start cutting and, and falling and you have to support the saw, that's when it gets more important, especially for limbing as we're about to do. There's also a way that for, when you walk in the woods, this is something my gra granddad Chester taught me. There's a way that a, a logger or a forester walks in the woods because it's a really difficult environment. Oftentimes out wet, it's just steep. There's lots of rocks, there's limbs, all of that. And it's kind of a very loose jointed walk. So when I'm walking through the forest, I'm, I'm, it's a very loose and kind of bent knees and lots of movement at the hips to, to accommodate all of that round stuff. If you just try to walk and trace through the forest like a normal person, you're hanging up on brush and you're stumbling and you're doing this. You'll see a guy that's worked in the forest or does a lot of hunting out west. He's got kind of a strange gait. It's almost like slithering and crawling across the ground. It's very loose jointed and very relaxed. And that will help you from getting caught up on snags and sticks and from falling down. Just think about it when you're walking that anything you step on, if it were to move a little bit or to roll a little bit, you're not gonna fall. It becomes very important when you're carrying these tools like this, axes, crosscut saws, chainsaws, that you stay upright and that you're not falling down and hurting yourself. Now I'm all about saving my body and doing things as easy as possible. That's why when I'm limbing, I start at the top <laughs> and work my way down. I'd rather work downhill than work uphill. All right, keeping that saw close. Feel that loose, disjointed walking, that easy, ready to move, ready to roll all the time, kind of a slithering through the forest. 
come up here, set your saw in here, start clearing out your work area, making a plan. I'm good at clearing out areas. I have plenty of experience. Yep. Okay, you have a comfortable area here you can work. You see, you're gonna kind of work down here. You're gonna cut, just cut your path as you go. Now when you're chopping limbs with an ax, you never chop in the crotch. You always come from the back side, right here. Why is that? Because what it does is the crotch, it directs the, the axe in, and you end up chopping too deep and doing more work. See how it wants to go like that? You want to chop from the back side like this. Okay. Back side. There go my limbs. And this is, that, this is a perfect reason why you carry an axe with you. Sometimes on the smaller stuff, when you're clearing a spot to work, you can come in here in just a couple strokes, clear things out without fooling with the saw. But these bigger ones, when we get into the bigger branches, you're gonna need the saw. So have your axe ready. Put it above your work. So it's there if you need it. Let's talk about that a little bit, Jack. That's a really good, good point there. Now, so we've got, when we fell this tree, of course, it's sitting up on some branches, right? So it's nice to have it sitting up on branches because then it's not in the dirt when we want to buck it. Uh -huh. So I'll leave these. I won't usually fool with those till last. If I'm using, if I'm cutting firewood, I'll leave all those low branches to let it support itself. But also you have to be careful because then it might fall down. It can, if you cut one of those, that may be the only thing that's keeping it from rolling downhill. So what I'll do is as I'm cutting my firewood, if I'm just doing rounds, I'll start cutting and cutting and cutting. When I get to this, then I'll go ahead and cut it off and then continue on. Because I don't want to deal with cutting a bunch of limbs off of rounds of firewood. So I want to do it as I go. Keep your axe on the uphill side. And then you're going to start working down here with your saw and start your limbing. Are you ready? Mm-hmm.
going on? Heart racer. I was having forest envy. What's that? I was having forest envy. Forest envy. <laughs> come here, come here, baby. Yeah, I come on, baby, get up here. Come on, give me hand. What do you think? Oh goodness, look at that. It's tiring to hold it, isn't it? From the vibration. Can't hear you. Hold on. So Jack did a great job. He learned to did some bucking down there. And then uh, Lemming, he just put the saw away. He's pretty much pumped out. So. Oh, you have. Okay. What is it? I said you were pretty much you. Your arms were. You were having a hard time holding up the saw. I heard you ask it. I heard him ask it. Yeah. Yeah. I, I didn't want to approach when I had a new person on the chainsaw. I thought <laughs> it's better if I just stay back. <laughs> Good job, Jack. Does Mama use the chainsaw? Mama has. That's Mama's used that chainsaw. So that's about all we have time for today. And that's probably about all you have strength for. You're probably pretty tired after running that saw, huh? Uh-huh. So how was, uh, what was your experience like? What, how was it different than you had anticipated? It wasn't really different from how I anticipated. Much more tiring, though. More tiring. Uh -huh. Yeah. So this is a, this is a 25 inch bar on that 260. It's a little bit too much bar for you. It's a lot of weight hanging out there. We'll, go, we'll get you a smaller bar and it's gonna make a big difference. Um, that's a that's kind of one of the way I had it set up for myself because I'm taller so I didn't have to bend over so far And you'll also know that it's hard to run this saw with that long bar because it's not designed to, to have such a big bar So when you have a smaller bar you can have lots of power It's mm -hmm. not gonna you have so much trouble keeping it going, but you did really really well had a couple um, Had to get on you a couple times for uh, taking your hands off before the chain stopped spinning But you got that figured out, but you cut real safely um, I felt uh, that uh, couple more hours that we can cut together and I'm not going to have to be like a mother hen over you. You did a really good job. So you'll just have to build up your strength and endurance and you'll be able to go all day. And in about two or three years you'll be running this big one and I'll run the little one. I might not want to go for, or I might not want to go all day though. You'll be able to go all day. Sometimes, uh, sometimes it just takes a long time to, to develop that, uh, that strength. It just, it just, it's hard work. Logging is one of the hardest jobs there is out there. You got kind of a taste of that today. And so next video, we'll have maybe another part or two. We'll do some, uh, some a little more advanced bucking and wedging. Um, uh, we'll uh, show how to measure and to scale a little bit for, uh, we'll take some of this, we'll be for the sawmill. It'll be nice lumber for projects and some of it will be for firewood. Uh, we'll do a little bit of forestry and cleaning up and habitat rehabilitation. Uh, and then we'll take these logs up there and, and we'll, we'll see what we can do. So kind of show on to show you from start to finish, you know, when the log comes down. Oh, also, we'll, I'll show you some, some cool ways to deal with stumps uh, that um, you probably haven't seen before that uh, is simple, something that you can do to make them, clean them up and make them look a whole lot better and actually use them as an incubator for future tree starts. So is there anything else, anything new on the homestead we need to add? Cougar? Oh, the mountain lion. Yeah, I wanted to mention that. So I told Jack, I said, no one is allowed to go anywhere without uh, being armed. We're going to have a, have a rifle on us all the time, or handguns at least. There's a mountain lion that just uh, has been uh, attacking livestock and pets um, right up the road from our neighbor. And yesterday morning, we just got a text, uh, yeah, it was yesterday morning, uh, that it came right in uh, one of our neighbors or one of our best friend's yard uh, while my uh, friend's husband, or, friend's wife was at home with and they had a brand new mastiff puppy and it came in and attacked and killed the puppy um, so that's the second or third encounter I've heard of this particular mountain lion in this area so uh, we've notified DNR they're sending some professional hunters up that will uh, track it with dogs and um, and kill it uh, because it's becoming a danger to folks that live up here and to animals livestock and pets so just can't have it when they start coming in this close. So if we see it, we'll shoot at some dance wax, won't we? Shoot at some dance wax. You don't know about dance wax? Mm -mm. My granddad said that when we used to hunt. Granddad Chester, mm -hmm. he'd uh, we'd go hunt and said, boy, we're gonna get him this year. We're really gonna slay him. We're gonna shoot some dance wax at him. I never knew what that meant until I found out that he, him and his brother Speed, they stored their ammunition in a dance wax can. That same one I keep my funnel in. Shoot him some, some dance wax. All right, thanks for watching. We'll see you guys on the next part, and I guess on the next video.
got the just got Zomar on here. You driving or me? <laughs> 